Imagine this. You just get home after a long day, you're ready for dinner, and you just want to relax. You got a burrito bowl from Chipotle, you paid extra for the guac because it's EPR season and you deserve it, and it's still hot. You get the TV on, hit Netflix, and now you got to decide what show you want to watch. You don't want just a good show, right? No, you want the perfect show, so you're scrolling. You're scrolling through the top ten. Stranger Things? Nah, I already finished that in like two days. Bridgerton? Nah, I don't have enough wine in the house for that. Too hot to handle? Maybe? Nah. So you keep scrolling and scrolling. All these choices and options, all of them good, none of them perfect. And eventually you look down at your food, and now it's cold. So you put the search. This scenario that we just walked through demonstrates what psychologist Barry Schwartz calls the paradox of choice. It's what people in our circle know as analysis paralysis. This phenomenon basically says that although we expect having more choice to bring more freedom and therefore more happiness, sometimes too much choice can do the exact opposite. And therein lies the paradox. To demonstrate this, we're going to play a game. I think all of you are familiar with it. It's called This or That. If you like one option, you guys raise your hand. If you like the other option, you raise your hand. But you can't raise your hand for both. The first question I have for you guys is, what truck would you buy? The Ford or the Chevy? So if you like the Ford, raise your hand. All right, thank you, thank you. If you like the Chevy, raise your hand. All right, cool. So we saw when there's only two options on the screen here, that decision was pretty easy. I saw hands go up quick. And I saw them go up confidently. But what happens when we take a look at all the options out there on the market? That decision gets a little more difficult because now you're thinking about the price, the horsepower, tone capacity, what colors do they come in, and in this economy, how well they do with gas, right? And all of these factors can get overwhelmed pretty quickly. Now for the next one, it's the age-old debate. Where are we eating? In and out or water burger? So for my In-N-Out folks, raise your hand, let me see them. Yeah. Right. For the water, water burger folks. Right. So we actually have the results of this very quick survey. And it turns out that In-N-Out wins by a It didn't even look like a close competition. I know we have some disgruntled water burger fans in the audience, but to be fair, on stage, so these results seem legitimate. <laughs> Jokes aside, again, two options, that decision is pretty easy, but what happens when we take a look at all the restaurant chains out there? It's a little more difficult. This exercise demonstrates that when we have fewer choices, our decisions are easier, they're quicker, and we make them more confidently. And to take that even further, that psychologist I mentioned earlier, Barry Schwartz, you know studies that show when people decide between fewer options, they are actually happier with what they decide. Now we see this phenomenon every day in the commissary aisles when we're trying to buy milk. What type of milk do you want? Whole milk, 2% non-fat, organic, organic grass-fed pasture-raised, almond milk, oat milk. Beyond our decisions at the grocery store though, I think we see this paradox of choice in more consequential decisions in our lives like what should we do after we separate? Or what solution should we choose when we're trying to get after that problem at work? Speaking of work, I'm in the CR, and I know Travis knows all about the CR. But for the rest of the Air Force, it's a pretty niche organization. So much so, in fact, that when I was TDY to a different base, I was standing in line at the commissary, and a gentleman came up to me and pointed to my tag and was like, CR, is that? Are you in combat rescue? And I, I looked at him straight in the eyes and I said, you're absolutely right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then I let him pay for my lunch. No, I'm <laughs> I told him CR stands for contingency response. We have roughly 30 different career fields in a singular squadron, and we can deploy anywhere in the world to set up and operate airfields. Now in the CR, we bumped into the paradox of choice, specifically with the problem set of ACE, or Agile Combat Employment. See, ACE required a complete shift in mindset in the typical large force packages that operated from locations with a lot of infrastructure and support to much smaller packages that operated from locations with little to no support. 
How this decision point, we didn't get much guidance, so our list of possible options was pretty extensive. Should we stand up an ACE training program? Should we send people to get trained on fibers? Should we bring those fiber guys to our unit? I mean, what are other units doing? Should we do what they do? And we see these options and choices, all of them good, but none of them perfect. So this paralysis began to creep in. Not because there were no worthy options to pursue, but because there were too many. Too many unanswered questions, right? Too many shows on Netflix to choose from. So how do we get past this? Well, the first step to getting past the paradox of choice is just acknowledging that the psychological phenomenon exists. And that's pretty easy. Either you're in this audience or you're one of the two people that are going to be watching this recording. Learning that it's a very natural thing to be overwhelmed by choice. So congratulations, everyone. You just completed step one. Step two of getting past analysis paralysis is understanding that there is no perfect choice out there. And that's a little more difficult, especially for those of us that wear this uniform. You see, perfection in the realm of choice does not exist, but we've been trained to pursue perfection in everything that we do. Whether that's making our bed in the morning at basic training, or trying to find the perfect word for an awards package. How many hours have we agonized in murder boards just trying to find the perfect word? Lead project? No, that's not good enough. Spearheaded? It's kind of weird, dude. <laughs> Quarterback? Hey, that could work. No, 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 no. Poncho. Yeah, that's the perfect word. And we see our expectation of perfect in these menial choices begin to creep into our expectations for larger decisions that we have much less control over. And that, in effect, makes us more hesitant to choose. Lastly, to get past the paradox of choice, we need to understand that the clock is always ticking. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Time will always be a scarce resource in your personal lives, absolutely. But even more so when we think about pushing the Air Force into the future. Accelerate change or lose is predicated on the idea that we don't have much time. It's saying that the time it takes us to make decisions has been historically too long. Before, when there was a larger gap between us and our nearest peers, it might have been okay to explore options and strategies for years before making a decision. But since that gap is much closer, we need to arrive at decisions more quickly. And to do that, we need to spend less time paralyzed by choice. Now our unit took these guiding principles to shape off the paralysis and make strides towards realizing our ACE visions. We saw that the fighters struggle most with setting up their support functions. Think communications, think setting up their living quarters, they moving all of their maintenance equipment. And we saw that their shortfalls were actually our strengths. The CR has deployable comms, check. The CR has deployable tents, check. The CR has highly trained port dogs that can move that equipment, check. And we realized, we saw what the fighters needed, and we saw what we could provide, so we decided to integrate. And to test this integrated design, we decided for some reason to start at the Air Force's largest ACE dedicated exercise, Agile Flight. And I'm not going to lie to you, this thing that we invested so much into, it failed. This is from the After Action Report. Observation. Unfamiliarity with CR capabilities led to a lack of utilization of critical functions by the fighter within. Ouch. Observation. Lack of pre-deployment communication between the units led to suboptimal mission execution by CR members. Yikes. It's kind of harsh, right? Who wrote this? Actually, I wrote that. <laughs> and that's okay. Because when you push non-perfect solutions, you're going to get improvement areas and growing pains. But we can't let the fear of these faults prevent the solution altogether. Because despite the shortcomings, the solution we pushed is still better than what we were doing before. In a real-world example from 2020, it took us almost 1,000 people in over six months of time to build up Prince Alton Air Base for fighter operations. From our solution of a CR and fighter unit integrated design, it took 18 people instead of 1,000, and it took five days of time rather than six months. We needed a good plan for ACE about four years ago when war simulations deemed this our best shot at winning against a pure adversary. Fast forward to now, and I think a lot of us are still looking for the perfect solution four years later. 
In the meantime, our peers are leveraging technologies such as AI and hypersonic missiles. And the pace they develop these capabilities may make ACU tiles a whole. The clock is ticking, and there is an expiration date to the value of ACE. Beyond just ACE, though, and beyond Air Force problems, there is an expiration date to every decision you make in your life. When you're trying to find the perfect show on Netflix, that expiration date is when your food gets cold. Or when you and a spouse are trying to decide on the perfect place to have dinner, that expiration date is probably when one or both of you gets rationally angry. <laughs> Beyond just decisions on what to watch and what to eat, though, I think everyone in this room has choices that they're paralyzed with. Talking about those decisions that you put off for as long as you could. Talking about those choices that you carry in the back of your mind like a heavy burden. Maybe you're putting off school because you can't decide on the perfect major for you. Or maybe you haven't taken the steps to mending a broken relationship.